Would you like to invest across almost the entire world with just one stock? Want to collect a market beating dividend while you sleep soundly at night? Like the idea of being invested in a company that is exposed to most products human beings consume? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. Helps us to get the word out and grow the channel. I'd really appreciate it. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is providing flavors and fragrances to thousands of customers all over the globe. What does makeup have in common with food? Well, both are products that this company makes ingredients for. In fact, they make ingredients for just about anything you could possibly imagine. As long as consumers continue to, well, consume, this company should continue to rake in more profits and pay out bigger dividends. I personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. Best of all, the stock was undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I want to share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of International Flavors and Fragrances, Inc., which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. International Flavors and Fragrances, Inc., stock ticker IFF, is a leading producer of flavors and fragrances that are used in food, beverages, household goods, and personal care products. Founded in 1833, International Flavors and Fragrances is now a $32 billion by market cap global ingredient solutions leader that employs more than 13,000 people. Fiscal year 2019 sales were broken down across the three following business segments. Scent, 37%. Taste, 34% and Fruiteroom, 29%. Investing in international flavors and fragrances is like investing in the entire world. Why do I say that? The company sold over 128,000 individual products to more than 38,000 global customers in fiscal year 2019. They're involved in the manufacturing process for everything from baked goods to lipstick. There's almost no product out there that this company doesn't touch in some way. And these aren't just giant corporations we're talking about either. 65% of the company's fiscal year 2019 sales were to small and medium-sized businesses. Also, this is truly a global operation. During 2019, 80% of their combined net sales were to customers outside the United States. As long as people continue to consume, well, just about anything and everything, international flavors and fragrances should continue to prosper. That bodes well for their ability to register higher profits and pay out bigger dividends over the long run. They've increased their dividend for 18 consecutive years. The 10-year dividend and growth rate is 11.5%. This comes on top of the stock's current yield of 2.4%. That yield, by the way, is 20 basis points higher than the stock's own five-year average yield. I will note, however, that there's been a deceleration in dividend growth. The good news is this has lowered the payout ratio. The payout ratio is now 56% based on trailing 12 months adjusted earnings per share. That indicates a well-covered dividend. These dividend metrics are really solid. I view a yield of between 2.5% and 3.5% paired with a high single-digit dividend growth rate to be the sweet spot for dividend growth investors. We're we're basically there with this stock. Looking at business growth, International Flavors and Fragrances has increased its revenue from $2.623 billion in fiscal year 2010 to $5.140 billion in fiscal year 2019. That's a compound annual growth rate of 7.76%. Pretty impressive top line growth here. However, the company has been active in the M&A space and this non-organic growth has had the effect of greatly increasing revenue. The $7.1 billion acquisition of Israeli flavors and ingredients company Fruiteroom in 2018 is an example of that. Fiscal year 2019 revenue noticeably jumped over fiscal year 2018 revenue. More recently, the company closed on a merger with DuPont's nutrition and biosciences business, NMB, via a reverse Morris Trust transaction that valued NMB at 26.2 billion dollars. This move has catapulted international flavors and fragrances into a global ingredients juggernaut. Earnings per share grew from $3.26 to $6.17 adjusted 
over this 10 year period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 7.35%. I used adjusted earnings per share for fiscal year 2019. Gap earnings per share numbers of late have been volatile and skewed. This is mostly due to acquisition related fluctuations like integration costs. We can see that bottom line growth matches up pretty well to top line growth, indicating that the company hasn't been making poor choices with its strategy. Looking forward, CFRA believes that international flavors and fragrances will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 8% over the next three years. This would be a modest acceleration in earnings per share growth relative to what the company has registered over the last decade. CFRA has this to say about the company's near-term prospects, and I quote, about 85% of IFF sales are recession resilient, which bodes well during the COVID-19 pandemic, unquote. CFRA also gives high marks regarding the Fruit Room acquisition, noting that this move makes strategic sense and provides international flavors and fragrances with exposure to adjacent markets with faster growth than legacy markets. Building on that in a big way is the merger with DuPont's F&B business, which only serves to increase the scale of the combined enterprise. This move is also expected to unlock additional value through synergies on the order of approximately $300 billion in cost synergies and revenue synergies of approximately $400 billion by the end of year three post-close. The market obviously likes this move. IFF popped 18% on February 1st, as soon as the deal closed. Uh, as a side note, that pop, by the way, is unfortunate. It occurred right as I was in the middle of doing this research and putting this analysis together. The increase in price reduces the level of undervaluation. A possible long-term growth catalyst is the geographic sales mix. This company is less tied to the mature US market than what you'd ordinarily see from a global business. I believe CFRA's call here is appropriate. It's not much higher than the 10-year earnings per share growth rate. This should translate into high single-digit dividend growth. When attached to the stock's current yield, there's a lot to like about that. Moving over to the balance sheet, the debt load has grown as a result of the aforementioned M&A activity. They've exchanged balance sheet strength for absolute growth. This comes with pros and cons. I see the balance sheet as still good, but it's certainly not as strong as it used to be. The long-term debt to equity ratio is 0.64, while the interest coverage ratio is just over five. That's as of the end of fiscal year 2019. I suspect the latter number will look better after the company moves past its busy M&A activity and results smooth out. However, the balance sheet will transform over the next 12 months as the DuPont FMB merger is fully realized. Profitability is robust and I suspect it can and likely will improve in the future. Over the last five years, the firm has averaged annual net margin of 10.17% and annual return on equity of 16.28%. This isn't a sexy tech stock. It's decidedly boring, but boring is beautiful. Successful long-term investing is a lot like watching paint dry. This business is a key part of the manufacturing process for almost any kind of consumer product you could think of. It's the kind of stock that can just quietly compound your wealth for you over many years. And with global scale, proprietary formulas, R&D, and switching costs, the company does have durable competitive advantages. Of course, there are risks to consider. Litigation, regulation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Substantial international sales means currency exchange risk. The company's flurry of m and activity introduces execution and integration risk. The weakened balance sheet is a concern and input costs like raw materials can oscillate. With these risks in view, I still believe this business should make for a fine long-term investment. That's especially the case with an undemanding valuation. The stock is trading hands for a price to earnings ratio of 23.1. That's based on adjusted trailing 12 months earnings per share. If you think that's high, the five-year average price to earnings ratio for the stock is 31.9. Let's also consider that the price to cash flow ratio of 19.9 is well off of its three-year average of 24.6. And the yield, as noted earlier, is measurably higher than its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 7.5%. My modeled dividend growth rate is lower than the 10-year demonstrated dividend growth rate. It's also lower than CFRA's near-term earnings per share growth projection. And it's not far off from the 10-year earnings per share growth rate. I don't think this is an unreasonable long-term expectation from the business, especially if the F&B merger is even mildly accretive. With a modest payout ratio and high single digit earnings per share growth, the dividend should grow at a high single digit pace. 
The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $132.44. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value of money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates IFF as a four-star stock with a fair value estimate of $130. CFRA rates IFF as a four-star buy with a 12-month target price of $133. A very tight consensus. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $131.81, which would indicate the stock is possibly 4% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. International Flavors and Fragrances Inc. is a high quality company that allows shareholders to participate in the upside of nearly all global product consumption. The stock had a massive pop right as I was putting this analysis together, which is rather unfortunate and untimely, but I still think it can be a great long-term investment. With a market beating yield, double digit dividend growth, a modest payout ratio, almost 20 straight years of dividend raises, and the potential that shares are 4% undervalued, this is a stock that should be seriously considered on any kind of pullback. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did. And let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six-figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over at Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell a stock. I put my money where my mouth is and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alert. I'll see you next time.